A number of years ago, um, we bought a house and my partner wanted us to budget everything, all our expenses for things such as uh, uh, the, the curtains and the carpet and how much money do we need for the stereo set. And I thought this was a bit silly. I said, why can't we just buy what we need right now and tomorrow we'll see. And it turns out that I was right because after 10 years we still do not have curtains and we use all our money to go on vacations. Turns out we needed our relaxation more than our privacy, apparently. Now, somebody who knows a lot about budgeting is the man who wrote Implementing Beyond Budgeting. And his name is Bjarte Boxnes. Hello, Bjarte. Hello, Jürgen. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Does, does a story like this sound familiar to you, of people discussing budgets in their households? Uh, absolutely. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, as, as I often say, Beyond Budgeting is a somewhat misleading name because the purpose of Beyond Budgeting is not necessarily to get rid of budgets. The purpose is to create organizations which are more agile, uh, more human, because that is good and necessary for great performance in organizations. And in order to do that, you need to change traditional management. And what do we find at the core of traditional management? we find the budgeting process and the budgeting mindset. And that is why that normally needs to go, because it represents so much of traditional management. But there's a lot of other things you, you need to do as well. And I've actually been in organizations um, uh, with budgets that I would claim are more beyond budgeting than companies who technically have got rid of the budgets, but have they are still kind of doing the stupid micromanagement and centralized command and control in, 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 in other ways. So it is, um, it is a bit misleading as a, as a, as a label. Uh, budgeting is part of it, but again, there is much more you have to do. All right. Okay, so that makes perfect sense uh, to me. So it's much more than just the budgeting, but uh, for, for me and other people, the budgeting stands out because it's, it's a thing we don't hear that often in, in other communities and, and, and movements. And as you say, it's an, it's an important part. Um, that brings me to, to one of my questions for you. Um, there are plenty of movements and, and communities out there, including Agile and Lean and Lean Startup and Holacracy, and results only work environments, etc. And many of them claim more or less the same things. Um, now, how do you think beyond budgeting uh, differentiates itself from, from the others? Is there something that, that you bring to the table, the round table, uh, that, that others are not covering that well? Well, um, I find budgeting, uh, beyond budgeting, being different from a lot of the other stuff out there in, in two dimensions. Um, and I would add to the list that you had uh, concepts like the, uh, the, uh, the balance scorecard, for instance, which many claim is a, is a complete management model. Um, but if you look at a lot of the other stuff out there, uh, a lot of that stuff is kind of recipe oriented. It's telling you exactly what to do. Beyond budgeting is not telling you exactly what to do. It's more uh, some guiding principles, some ideas. But what this should mean in your organization, that depends on what kind of business you're in, what kind of culture you have, what kind of history you have. So, so this is not a, a, a recipe. Um, another difference, I think, has to do with beyond budgeting is trying to address the whole management uh, agenda, uh, everything you need to, or most of what you need to think about if you, if you, if you aim to, to, to lead and manage an, an, an organization. And a lot of the other things out there, uh, including some of those you mentioned, they do not, for instance, have a, a view on incentives and bonus schemes, uh, as one example. Uh, beyond budgeting does, uh, do not have a view on um, uh, a lot of things that is uh, important for managers in, in their daily daily lives. So, beyond budgeting is making an attempt to apply to, to attend to the whole of the management agenda and not just parts of it. Um, and both these things makes beyond budgeting somewhat different, also more challenging, uh, demanding to, to to implement because. 
uh, again, recipes are easier to implement than, than, uh, than ideas where you have to do a lot of thinking yourself. And um, addressing the totality of management, the whole management agenda is, is easier than, than uh, uh, only addressing parts of it. So um, with a lot of the other stuff, you find that companies implement this by simply adding it on to the stuff they already have. And nothing is easier than kind of adding a new box on top of old boxes. Uh, beyond budgeting is actually about removing a lot of the old boxes because it is uh, it is actually about, about quite a radical uh, change. Okay, great. I, I I like that. So it's it's more than just recipes. It's it's more like a philosophy on which you base a number of uh, of your of your ideas. And for me, the 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 money part is is a very fascinating aspect. Uh, like you said, the bonuses and. and uh, balance scorecard uh, uh, replacement or an addition to balance scorecard ideas with metrics, key performance indicators is something that you don't often see in in other uh, in other movements uh, at this at this time. So something you bring to the to the table. Um, one thing that that I have been struggling with when I when I read your book and I've attended uh, a keynote of yours uh, recently in, in Sweden uh, was uh, was uh, budgets versus versus forecast. Can you explain to me once again um, uh, what what's the difference? How do we use these two uh, 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 in your opinion? Well, it's a good question and. The forecast is one of three different purposes behind a budget. Because if you ask people in managers, finance people, what's the purpose of, of those budget numbers that you produce? Uh, most will end up with a list of three different purposes. Um, uh, forecasting would be one of those. We are trying to understand what the future might look like. Uh, but the second purpose would be target setting. Um, the budget represents on financial targets, uh, sales targets, production targets, and the third purpose of a budget is resource allocation. Right? Sitting in the autumn the year before and handing all, out all these bags of money to the organization. And these three purposes are in a way, can be sensible purposes if they are done in a good way. But if you try to combine all of these three different things in one process that shall result in one set of numbers, then, then there is a problem. I mean, just try to, try to get a good sales forecast in, in an organization. If, uh, if uh, the sales guys at the same time understand that that sales forecast will also become my sales target and there is a sales bonus connected to hitting that sales target, I mean, then we know that you get a flawed uh, and biased uh, sales uh, forecast as one example. So in Beyond Budgeting, we are still trying to do all these three things. Um, uh, forecasting through rolling forecasting or dynamic forecasting as we do in Startall. We still try to do some kind of target setting, but in a better, more intelligent way uh, than the, the um, mindless budget targets. Um, and we still need a resource allocation mechanism, but much more dynamic and flexible uh, than the traditional pre-allocation of cost. So uh, forecasting uh, is one of the purposes of uh, budgets, but only one of three, and it's something that we still do in a beyond budgeting uh, world. Uh, the purpose of a forecast um, is, is not to be right. It is about trying to be ready, trying to understand what lies ahead. In a lot of areas we can't forecast, it doesn't make sense because there's so much uh, uncertainty, but uh, a forecast should be brutally honest, uh, try to reflect uh, what we think will happen, whether we like what we see or not. That's, okay. different, from, that's different from a target, because a target is what we want to happen, right? The forecast is what we think will happen. Exactly, yeah. So um, one thing that I have been using with my naive understanding of beyond budgeting um, uh, in, in a number of my keynotes is uh, I've been saying we, we, we make forecasts of the weather but we do not budget or, or make targets for the weather. Does that make sense to you or is that a stupid example that I, that I use? No, I think that's, uh, that's, uh, that, that's a good example. Um, uh, absolutely, yes. All right, good. I'm glad to hear that. So I don't have to re rewrite my keynotes. <laughs> okay. So um, one thing uh, that's my that's my what my last question is about. One thing that uh, uh, stood out to me among the values of Beyond Budgeting, and I did read the book, uh, is the transparency thing. 
um, uh, make things transparent because uh, if if uh, uh, if everyone knows how much everyone is, is is spending, then you can get rid of uh, one part of budgeting because people will just take care of the shared money pot and themselves, so to speak. Interestingly enough. Um, uh, one comment I got in, in one European country, I won't name which one it is, uh, they said, oh, that's not going to work here, Jürgen, because in, in our culture, people are proud of spending the most money. So if we just make things transparent, the expenses will go up. Um, and this seems to me correlated with the broken windows theory that says people do what they see other people doing and if some people are stealing then other people will steal too. This is the mechanism behind riots and plundering for example. So how do you, um, how do you reconcile that with, with, with the value of transparency in organizations? Do you, do you see that, uh, is there a conflict or is there a, something else we need to make transparency work? Well, well, first, it's a good question, and bef before I uh, revert to that, I want to say a few words about why is transparency important. And transparency is, um, is important for, for several reasons. I mean, transparency is a very eff effective social control mechanism. I mean, there is a reason why thieves and crooks normally don't uh, operate uh, when it's daylight. They operate at night because then there is no transparency. Um, so, so by, by making things transparent, our experience is that it can actually be a positive and self-regulating uh, control mechanism. So that's, that's one uh, part of it. The, the other part is that uh, how can you have learning without transparency? Um, so, so, so I think there are many good reasons for, for, for uh, uh, why transparency is important, but Transparency, coming back to your question, I think transparency and trust goes hand in hand. I think it's in, in an organization with no, or in society for that sake, with, 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 with no trust, I think um, transparency can be a, a challenge. And on the other hand, I mean, this is the chicken and the egg because I think that transparency can build trust. Uh, I think that very often uh, if a corporate uh, uh, executive committee is being more, making more things more transparent, sharing more, uh, uh, that, that, can, that can build trust in, a, in an uh, organization. Uh, fortunately, we have not uh, experienced uh, the broken window uh, phenomena as a, uh, as a problem in, in, uh, in, in Stockholm. And uh, if, if it should be a problem, I would call it, uh, well, it could be a complication, but it shouldn't be a showstopper. I'm a strong believer in transparency. Well, I'm also a strong believer in transparency, so I agree with you there, but I also agree that there might be a chicken and egg situation here with, uh, with, uh, with trust. Um, sometimes I believe trust should precede transparency, and uh, some people seem to agree there because I've heard people say uh, transparency simply um, um, enlarges uh, or magnifies a culture that is already there. So if there is little trust in an organization, you will just get more distrust with transparency. On the other hand, if you have in principle a, a trusting organization where this is in place, then transparency will help people achieve more, uh, more trust in the organization. On the other hand, I also uh, believe that it could be the other way around, that transparency uh, uh, should be used before trust. So it, indeed, it's a chicken and egg situation, quite difficult. It's a complex world we're living in, uh, Bjarte. We have to remember that. Absolutely, and if, if things were simple, we would probably do something else, right? Then we would just need a couple of recipes and we would get rid of all the, all the uh, philosophies, but that's not the case. Uh, fortunately, we need, yes. we need a bit of beyond budgeting uh, to make sense of the world. Um, how can people, can people get started with, uh, with beyond budgeting in their organizations? I think like uh, for any case, uh, or for any change journey, you need a case for change. And I think it is my, my advice to organizations that are thinking about this is that make sure that you have a, a common and agreed case for change, that you agree that you talk about the problems that you have with the, the current way of doing things. And the, the, the better job you do on, on that stage, the easier it is to move into implementation. If you move straight into implementation, um, Without uh, without any um, uh, case for change, then uh, you are in deep shit. 
Okay, well, that sounds sounds good. By the way, my budget for the 15 minutes on air is just about up. <laughs> so uh, I I suggest we're going to wrap things up. Thank you very much for uh, for joining, Bjarte. Here is my uh, my kudo card for you. Look at that. Thank you for your great work on uh, on the book and uh, on your awesome keynotes. Uh, and uh, I hope more books will appear in the in the future about uh, beyond budgeting because it's a fascinating topic. And um, uh, hope to see you again uh, in the future at, uh, at another keynote and another conference. I'm sure that will happen, Jürgen. Looking forward to see you again as well. Thank you very uh, much. Okay, good. Thank you too. Uh, thanks to everyone who's been uh, watching. And uh, I'll probably see you again next week with another interesting person to talk to. But this was Jürgen Apollo with the seventh episode of 15 Minutes on Air. Thank you very much. Bye bye.